Hi everybody, in this video we'll be talking about graphing some general rational functions. And by general, I just mean that we're gonna make them a little bit more difficult. Uh, yesterday was like an introduction, some basic stuff. Um, today we're just gonna go a step further. And so notice that I've taken my three steps or two steps or whatever I had last time, and I've turned it into five steps now. Uh, we're gonna add the things that are in bold. Those are new because those are things that we didn't have to worry about last time when we were graphing our rational functions. So step one is not going to be just to find, set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Now we're going to factor the numerator and denominator separately. We're gonna do that before we go any further. Okay, so uh, first example, 2x squared over x squared minus 9. I just want you to know that you can factor the bottom. The, the top is just one term. You're not going to be able to do anything there. But the bottom does factor out, and that's x plus 3, x minus 3. So the first thing is just to rewrite as 2x squared over x plus 3, x minus 3. If you need help with factoring, that's too much for one video. You need to go look up one of the videos on factoring. Okay, well, we've done that a lot this year. All right? So now that I've done this, now I'm going to set the denominator equal to zero. I'm going to solve it for x. And so uh, if I have two pieces of information and those are multiplied together to give me zero, that means either the first thing is a zero or the second thing is a zero, right? Does that sound familiar? So I take each individual chunk that's been multiplied together and I set each one individually equal to zero. And that means that x is either a negative three or x is a positive three. And what that does is that tells me the location of my vertical asymptote. So here I actually have two of them. So I'm gonna go first, I'm gonna say, okay, dotted line right here at positive three and a dotted line at negative three. And it's something we've never experienced before is having more than one vertical asymptote, but that's perfectly acceptable. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the degrees, the numerator and denominator. You can do it down here if you want to. It's easier really to see up here whenever it's already been foiled out. I can see I have an x squared on top and an x squared on bottom. Those are the same, the same degree, right? And so I compare the coefficients. I have a two x squared and a one x squared. Two over one is two, okay? So what I did here so far is I had the vertical asymptotes at x equals three and x equals negative three. And now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is at two over one because of those degree things, right? I'm writing stuff where you can't see it, okay? Because of the degree, I know that the, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals two. One more time, that's because I have the same power of x, x squared over x squared, so it's two over one. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to uh, turn my paper sideways to make it a little bit easier, but I'm gonna draw a horizontal asymptote right here at y equals two. And so now I kind of have a, a layout, right, of where things are going to be. All right, now, new step here. We're going to set the numerator equal to zero. We're going to solve for x, okay? The reason we're going to do that is because when I'm setting the numerator, that's the top of the function, equal to zero, okay? That means I'm really talking about where do I have zero over like a value, right? And zero divided by any number is equal to zero. Okay. In other words, we've been using the word zero a lot this year. Those are going to be the locations where it hits zero on the axis here. It's going to actually cross the x-axis. So that's going to be an important point that we want to keep in mind. In this case, 2x squared is my numerator. So if I took 2x squared and I set it equal to zero and I solve for x, that'd be dividing out the 2 first. So x squared is equal to zero divided by 2, which is zero. Square root plus or minus, you know what, it's just zero in this case, right? But what I know is it's going to cross at x equals zero. So I can go ahead and I can put a dot here. So that's going to be finding the x-intercept is maybe what we've gotten, or we've got a, a root, or we've got a zero, whatever you want to call it. Last step, okay, so we've got things kind of set up. Here's what I know, ready? I'm either going to shoot upward at this line or I'm going to shoot downward. On the inside, in this middle third, I'm going to either go down and down, or maybe down and up, or up and down, or up and up, but I'm going to approach these vertical asymptotes as I reach those. And then on the outside, I'm going to maybe come from the top and go down, or come from the bottom and go across, right? And I'm going to level off all around this y equals 2 line is where I'm going to level off at. I also know that the only point that it crosses, the only point that it crosses the x-axis is at 0, because I set the numerator equal to 0, and I found that, right? So, time to go plot some points. Let's pick a point like negative four and let's find out if it's above or below. Okay, I think that's gonna give us a good idea what's going on. If I put in now, using my x and y coordinates, 
Okay, if I put in a negative 4 to this equation, what would I get? Well, I would get negative 4, and I would square it, which is positive 16. Positive 16 times 2 is positive 32. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So I have a negative 1 times a negative 7, which is a positive 7. I have 32 divided by 7, which is like 4 point something. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, negative 4, I'm going to go up to 4 point something, I'm going to put a dot. I can already see, by the way, since this is above the asymptote, I bet it approaches it this way. Okay, but we're going to repeat this process. We're just going to go through and we're going to plug in some different points and we're going to plot out a point and, and see what it looks like. Okay, um, if I put in negative 10, let's find out what that looks like. What if I put in like a negative 10? Negative 10 times x squared, is, so that would be negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. Positive 100 times 2 is 200, so I'd have a 200 over. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13. I need my calculator here because I don't want to do it in my head. Negative 7 and negative 13 multiply out to 91. 200 divided by 91 is just over 2. It's like 2 point something, right? Okay, so I'm going to come over here to negative 10, and it's 2 point something. Oh, yeah, no surprise, right? I bet what we have here is we have a graph that kind of goes like this, and it shoots upward. I know it can't cross the axis because there are no zeros out here, so it probably had to go up. Um, let's go to the other side here. Ready? What if I put in a positive 4? What would happen? Okay, if I went all the way to the right side, so I know I'm working with the right third. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. On the right side, I have 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1. Oh, 7 times 1. So I'm going to go to seven, 32 divided by 7 is 4 point something. So I'm going to go over to 4 and up 4, and 4 point something is maybe about right there. And you know what? I bet if I put a 10, I get the exact same thing. It's going to be 200 over 91. You can verify that on your own. Your job is to plot points. Feel free to use the graphing calculator and use the table. But it's going to end up looking like this. So now that leaves the middle section here, okay? And the options that I have for the middle section, I could either start at the top and go down to the bottom. So I could either have something that looks like this, or something that looks like this, or something that looks like this, or something that looks like this. So it's going to be one of those four options, but it is going to shoot upward or downward at each of the boundaries. So let's put in a few values and see what happens. What if I put in a negative 2? What if I put in a positive 2? Okay, so let's try both of those out. Okay, if I put in a negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Positive 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 2 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So you have 8 divided by 5, which is like 1.6. So if I put in a negative 2, I should be at 1.6. So I'm right about here. Okay, if I put in a positive 2, what do I get? Positive 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Hold on. I have positive 8 on top. On the bottom, I have 2 plus 3 is 5, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. I get a negative 5. Negative 8 divided by 5 is negative 1.6. So it goes something like this. And I can already see, now listen, if I'm above here and below here and the only point that it can cross is here, that means it has to shoot upward on the left and it has to shoot downward on the right. And so I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. Weird shape, right? I'd like you to see this on the graphing calculator. I'd like you to actually graph all these in the graphing calculator if you're not doing it already, which I think you're silly if you're not doing it. But I want you to practice typing this in. I have, I'm going to use parentheses here, ready? 2x squared on top divided by, notice my use of parentheses, x squared minus 9 on the bottom. And when I graph that out, I want you to see how it looks. Whoop, I messed it up, didn't I? What did I do wrong? Let's go back and verify. You know what? This is a good example of what not to do is, is to trust your gut here. What did I mess up? I bet this is a negative 8 fifths. Let me go back to negative 2 real quick. It looks like it goes down and down on both sides instead. So if I go to negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. That's true. Negative 2 plus 3 is negative 1, and negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Hmm. That's interesting here. 
Well, we'll have to talk about that one in class. For the sake of time, I'm going to go, oh, negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. Man, I really screwed that one up, didn't I? So that's positive 1 times negative 5, which is negative 8 fifths. So this thing actually goes downward. So this portion of the graph, hope you're writing in pencil, not pen, goes downward. And I have something that, in fact, looks like this. So there's the first example. I'll make another video here in a second. But really, I just want you to look. At, you see how it crosses, right? At negative 3 and positive 3, we can kind of see those lines starting to appear. I'll explain what those vertical lines are because um, they don't actually exist. They're dotted lines. But, um, you know, that'll get you going. We'll go do the second problem here in just a second. 